Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. <laughs> Hello and welcome to an Inkdependence.com brief video review and water drop test. This time we have Faber-Castell. This is actually Graf von Faber-Castell's Midnight Blue. This is the newest, uh, I believe the newest anyway, of the Graf von Faber-Castell inks. They run about 30 bucks a bottle, and it's a, uh, what is it, a 70 mil, 75 mil bottle. So it's a little bit on the expensive side. So let's check out and see if it's worth it. Uh, this is uh, more or less what the ink looks like, which is sort of a very, very deep blue with some, I don't know, I feel like there's some purpley tones in there. When we get down here to the comparisons, I think you'll see more what I mean with the purpley tones. Um, I describe the flow as medium dry, and that's because I tried this in a pair of pens that I, I've been using for quite a while. Uh, one is this, which is a uh, Pilot Vanishing Point that says a medium nib. And actually, this is a new nib I got at the Raleigh Pen Show, and it is much better than my old Vanishing Point nib, and it makes me really understand why people like Vanishing Points. Uh, and the other is this poor guy. This is a Twisby 540. Uh, started out life as a... Uh, as an orange 540 with uh, a medium, no, this is a fine nib on this one. And the nib is pretty good, although it's having some issues now. This whole pen is having issues. So uh, there are, the only parts from this pen that are still original are the nib and the, I believe the black housing might be original? Huh. Actually, maybe just the nib uh, on this one is original now that I think about it. Everything else has been replaced over time. They don't even make this model anymore, which is, which is <laughs> actually the problem. So if you see the orange barrel is a different color than the orange uh, section there. Yep, they don't make that anymore, so that's a different color. Uh, the cap is clear, and it definitely says uh, 580 on there because they don't even make the 540 anymore. Uh, don't let this put you off of maybe getting a Twisby. I really like my Twisby pens. This one, though, I think... I think it's kind of done. Uh, the next one I get will be the AL, which is the aluminum version. It's got uh, more, it's got way better components and I don't think it breaks apart all the time. This one, I don't know, it's got issues. So the fine nib in here didn't really like this ink too well. As you can see here in this writing sample, it's just kind of, I don't know, it's undersaturated it seems, it's too light. I just, I didn't like it that much. Uh, I used quite a bit of it actually, but I just I didn't like it. I, I kept trying to like it because I really like it in this pen. In this pen, it's this great super dark blue that is definitely blue, I think, but uh, also could probably you could get away with saying it's uh, uh, <laughs> it's going to be uh, black. Like if you have a very serious workplace or something, this is an ink that will totally fit in. I mean, it's got Graf von Faber Castell in the front of it, so it sounds fancy already. And then you put this uh, super dark blue in there, and there you go. All right, so uh, as I said before, it is crazy smooth in this vanishing point. I really like writing with it. I'll probably have to get a bottle of it, despite the uh, premium cost on this guy. Uh, but this bottle, or the, rather this ink, it feels really, really good on the nib of this pen. On this one, not so much. It just needs a slightly wetter nib. So this one's a little bit on the dry side, I think. Oh, I forgot to write in shading and sheen. Well, so, is there shading? Yes, some shading. And sheen. So, this does have a bit of a sheen to it on uh, the good paper. You can see, let's see if I can catch some of it. Get some more light on the subject. Let's get even more light on the subject. Why not? Um, I don't know. I'm not really capturing the sheen. It's definitely there. I'll show you on the Tomoe River. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not a huge sheening ink. So, if you don't like inks with a lot of sheen, uh, I think you'll still be okay with this one. It's not crazy or anything. Uh, then uh, let's take a look here at the uh, comparisons. Uh, there we go. All right. I usually keep a lot of blues inked up, and now is no uh, no exception. So, all right, stop moving. Good. No, I'm making it worse. All right, I'm just going to let it balance its way out. Uh, this is a disadvantage of the mount I have this camera in right now. Uh, so Faber-Castell Midnight Blue is, of course, up there at the top. Uh, there it is. Any sheen? Yeah, I don't know. Some sheen, not a whole lot. Underneath that is Yard of, Yard of Lead Blue Black, which I really love the color of this blue black. It's more blue, I think. And you can see why I think that the, the Midnight Blue is a little bit purple. 
uh, because it definitely compares, you know, purpley with these two. Uh, but Yardalet, I've had some issues with the flow on that one, so I don't know. I'm not totally sold on it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, 54th Mass, which is a perennial favorite of kind of everybody, I think. Uh, I haven't used it in a while, so I put it in a pen to use it again, and yeah, I still like it. I don't, uh, I don't know if I like it as much as I did when I first got it, but I still like it. Sailor Blue Black, which I'll be reviewing, well, probably after DC, actually, at this point. I'm kind of kind of running low on time. We're going on a little bit of vacation. And the Visconti Blue, which is not a blue-black at all, but just a pure, you know, blue. Uh, and so you can see, I think, that the Midnight Blue is quite a bit darker and a little bit more purpley. Uh, dry time on this guy is pretty good. It's got pretty fast dry time. This is on Rhodia, of course, which uh, is known for having long dry times because it's a coated paper. And on this one, you get about 15 seconds, give or take. Probably it could be, you know, somewhere between five and or, uh, 10 and 15, probably closer to 10 than 15, I would guess. But 15 seconds, for sure, no problems at all. You can see there was not even a smear at all. All right, so let's take a look at the water test on this guy right quick. And there we go. All right. Water test go. That's looking pretty good, actually. This uh, ink is billed as um, document proofed and indelible, so it's supposed to resist all kinds of things uh, water, UV, uh, certain chemicals, etc., etc., time. It's supposed to be a uh, very uh, sort of permanent ink, uh, indelible anyway. Let's go ahead and mop that up. And you can see a lot of it came up. You can see the grids and dots and stuff, but also you can still see the grids and dots here. So, uh, while not totally waterproof, it certainly is water resistant. You can definitely read what was left over without any problem. It just took a lot of the blue off. And you can show it's kind of like a purpley, kind of a, I don't know, it's a little bit violet almost. That's really interesting. But uh, yeah, so pretty good water resistance, although not total like some other inks. Uh, this one is uh, pretty good nonetheless. All right, let's look at the chromatography right quick. There's the chromatography. Yeah, there we go. All right. And you can see definitely the same kind of like violety color down there and then all the blue washing up off the top. So this is kind of what I expected. And this blue up here is actually really nice. It's a very nice blue up at the top. Kind of a, I don't know, a light bright blue. Let's see. There we go. It's a better balance of color, I think. You can see a very nice blue up there, kind of purpley down here. Kind of dusky purple anyway. All right, so there you go. That's the chromatography. Let's uh, look right quick at Tomoe River, and then we'll do copy paper, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, let's see. There it is. There it is on Tomoe River, and you can definitely see the sheen. There is the sheen on Tomoe River. If there's going to be any sheen in an ink, Tomoe River will bring it out. So, there you go. Uh, and you see another few pins I've got inked up with things for the DC Pin Show. If you're going to the DC Pin Show, come say hi, because I will totally be there the whole weekend. All right, so there you go. And it looks uh, way more black on this paper as well because it doesn't really soak in, and so you get more sheen and that kind of stuff. But this is a very dark blue and a pleasure to write with, honestly. Uh, let's see. All right, I'm going to back out for this one. Sorry about the shaking. There we go. And uh, there you go. So you can see there's uh, not really any feathering or spreading. There's a couple of little feathers here at the uh, top of the F and the top of the T. That's kind of it. Maybe a little bit there as well. It's kind of all in the lines. So maybe there's just a weak spot in the paper there is my guess. So this is 20 pound staples paper. There's not really anything in, in terms of quality control. And you can see, probably even on camera, you can see sort of bands through it. So yeah, not high quality paper. And on the back, the only problem really is here where uh, my, my poor sad Twisby just blurped ink onto the page for no good reason. I don't know. I think it's still got issues. I'm going to have to deal with it. Or maybe just get a new one. I don't know. But uh, up here, not so much. You see a few little dots coming through. The rest of it's just kind of ghosting because it's very dark ink. Uh, better performance than this one up here, which uh, is Diamine Purple Pizzazz, which I'll be reviewing uh, next week, I guess. So there you go. All right. So that's that. What else is left? I think that's it. All right. Well, this has been uh, Diamine, uh, Diamine, goodness, Faber-Castell, actually Graf von Faber-Castells. Uh, Midnight Blue. This was uh, provided for review by Anderson Pens. You can get samples and bottles and all sorts of things there at AndersonPens.com. Uh, you can get cartridges, bottles, and samples. Cart you can get six cartridges for $350, which is not terrible if, you like a, if you're a cartridge person. Some people are. Uh, like I said, the 30, 75 milliliter bottles are $30, bucks, uh, or you can get a sample of three mils for $1. fifty. So, you know, get yourself at least a sample of this one, I would say, if you're looking for a deep, dark blue-black. 
Um, if you're looking for uh, some water resistance, but not total water resistance, you're looking for like one that feels good on paper and you have like a really wet pen that you need to tame a little bit, this is the way to go. Uh, so there you go. All right, this has been uh, Ink Dependence. I am Mike. This is Graphone Fabric Castell's Midnight Blue. And uh, you can find me elsewhere on the web at, uh, on Instagram, I am at Ink Dependence, and on YouTube, I am, if you're not on YouTube already, I am youtube.com slash C slash Michael Madison. And if you are looking for me on the blog, it is www.inkdependence.com. So that's it. I'm out, and I, I hope to see a lot of you at DC. So come up and say hi. All right, y'all. Peace out.